Hi, my name is Jake Goslin. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Waves Super Rack Performer app so that you can run Waves plugins in a live environment with your mixing console like this X32 and your laptop. This will give you the ability to run any Waves low latency plugin without needing to use any additional server hardware. I'm gonna show you two use cases for this setup that's gonna come in handy for pretty much any live performance context. First, I'm gonna show you how I implemented Waves Tune real time on an individual vocal mic channel. And then I'm gonna show you how I added some analog emulation plugins on our master mix bus. The setup I'm gonna walk you through in this video can be applied to virtually any mixing console. It's obviously gonna be much easier if your mixing console has USB audio ins and outs like the X32 or many other comparable digital mixing consoles. But even with an analog mixing console, if you have the right USB audio interface alongside of your laptop, Top, you could actually insert these plugins into that workflow as well. And then of course you have audio protocols like Dante and Matty, anything that allows you to send audio from your mixing console to your laptop and then back to your mixing console, it's gonna work for this setup. The MacBook Pro is connected to the USB card on the back of this mixing console using a simple USB-A to USB type B cable into a dongle into the laptop. Once the USB connection is made between the laptop and the mixing console, you can open up the Waves Super Rack Performer app on your computer, go to Setup, and then go to Audio Device, and then under Device, make sure you have your Behringer device selected here. This is also where you can double check that your sample rate matches the sample rate of your mixing console, and then you can adjust the buffer size. Next up, we need to configure our audio routing settings between the X32 and the Super Rack application. So the first step in the routing process is to send the auxiliary outputs that you have on your X32 out the USB audio outputs from your USB sound card. In order to do this, go to your routing page, and then first I want you to go ahead and navigate over to patch points, go to your user outputs. I like to use user inputs and outputs for the greatest flexibility on this mixing console when it comes to routing. So I have output selected here, and then you can see here under each of these outputs, one through six, we have six auxiliary outs available on this mixing console. It's important to note that these auxiliary outs are what you're gonna be able to choose from when you go to a channel, like I have my vocal channel here, I go to the configuration, and you can see under inserts, I have my list of effects that I can insert into this individual channel, or down here, I can use my auxiliary outputs, which is what we're gonna use, to send the audio to Super Rack and then back to this channel before it's then outputted to the main mix. So this auxiliary output that you see here on this channel routes to these auxes that you see here that are labeled aux out, not aux in. They're labeled aux out on the X32. So that's an important first step. But of course, the next thing we need to do is go to our card outputs because we have not routed audio to the card yet until we do this. You can see I have for outputs one through eight, user out one through eight is selected. So now the auxiliary outputs one through six are within this first bank of user output one through eight that are sent out of the mixing console into Super Rack. So now I'm gonna head over to the Super Rack application and I'm going to, again, just double check, I have my device selected and I do. I'm gonna go to my overview of all the various racks that we have. In this setup, I'm gonna use rack number one for my vocal channel where we're gonna add our tuning plugin. So I'm gonna go to inputs on the vocal channel and then it's gonna be a mono input and then I'm gonna select input number one and now you can see the signal is coming through successfully from the X32. This is also a good time to start labeling the racks within the Super Rack application. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna label rack one to be my vocal mic. And then I'm gonna label rack two to be my master bus. And we already assigned our input one and output one 
for rack number one, which is our vocal channel. And then for our master bus, while I'm here, I'm gonna use auxiliary outputs five and six on the mixing console and then returns five and six or input five and six on the auxiliaries here. So I'm gonna keep the numbering consistent here. So I'm gonna be able to go into my inputs and I'm gonna select stereo this time for this mixing console. And I'm gonna go ahead and select five and six here. And then down here for outputs, we can see it actually automatically uh, routed them to outputs five and six stereo as well. So now we are successfully outputting audio from our USB card into Super Rack. And then in Super Rack, we have the inputs and outputs mapped properly, but there are still a few steps you have to do before it starts functioning the way it needs to on your X32. Go back to the X32 routing page. Now I need you to go to inputs and under the input blocks, go to your auxiliary inputs here and select card one through six. The sound that you're gonna be hearing from those card inputs coming back into the console are gonna be the processed audio coming from Waves Super Rack Performer. So now you can see when I go to my auxiliary inputs page on the mixing console, you can see the audio coming into those channels. If you look at the detail view on those channels, you'll see under configuration, the input here is auxiliary one, which is coming from card one. And then for my master bus, we have five and six. And I also did link auxiliary five and six by pressing the link knob right here. And there's still one final step I wanna walk you through to make sure this is set up properly, and that is to actually enable the inserts on either your individual channel or your mix bus. So I'm gonna to go to my vocal channel right here, and then you'll see I can select the insert right here. Another thing I want you to have in mind if you have musicians who have in-ear monitoring is you're gonna to wanna to go to the mix bus for their in-ears if that's the way that you're doing it on the console and then make sure your mix bus for their in-ear mix is gonna be pre-fader. So if I went ahead and soloed this mix bus right now, I'm gonna hear everything happening on the vocal channel before it actually goes out the insert and then back into the board when the vocal's tuned because in most cases you don't want a vocalist to hear their tuned voice while they're singing because it could really throw them off and it sounds weird. And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing for our master mix bus. It has that insert um, option here. So you can see right now it is disabled. And what I did is I went down to insert five and since we did pair our auxiliary input channels as stereo, it's going to automatically assume that that's a stereo feed coming back to the console. So now when I enable this insert here on our main left right mix, I'm hearing the audio process through waves and then coming back into this master bus. Finally, do not forget to save your routing settings to your scene on your mixing console. So I'll just go ahead and make sure I've saved everything here so that we don't have to do this work again. Now that the tedious part is over with routing, let's get to the fun part, which is applying plugins to our racks within Super Rack Performer. So like I said earlier, I have rack one, I'm gonna have that labeled vocal, and then I'm gonna have rack two labeled master mix. And then on the vocal rack, I'm gonna hit the plus icon here, go to my plugin list, I'm gonna go down to pitch shift, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select waves tune real time. And this plugin's lots of fun. I can adjust the tuning speed so I can bring it all the way down. So it's very uh, dramatic tuning effect. So you'll hear it uh, within the mix. Now let's move on to our master mix bus. I'm gonna disable the insert real quick and I'm gonna add in some plugins. So first let's add an analog EQ. So I'm gonna go to my plugin list. I'm going to go to my EQs and I'm gonna get the Poig Tech EQ right here. And then I'm gonna add another plugin right here, which is going to be the Magma BB Tubes plugin. So I'm gonna enable it post on my master left right bus. And now I can go ahead and sweeten up the mix with a little bit of beauty there on the Magma BB Tubes. I can add some beast to it. Once you have the routing set up and your plugins configured, make sure you do save everything both on the X32 and on the Super Rack application. So I'm gonna go to show in Super Rack and then I'm gonna go to sessions and then I'm gonna go ahead and press save as and I'll call this demo two and now I've saved the session. So the session saves everything within this project uh, for all the racks and it also saves all the snapshots, which I'll talk about in a second, um, within the session as well. 
So if you know, you're pretty much always gonna wanna have a particular set of racks with a particular set of processing chains and plugins that are gonna go alongside of your X32, then make sure you save that as a session. But what if you want to change plugin settings in between songs? A good example is if you want to change the key of vocal tuning in between different songs. That's where snapshots come in handy on the Waves Super Rack software. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to snapshots and then let's just go ahead and make a snapshot for the key of C and a snapshot for the key of D. So I'm going to go ahead and press new snapshot. I'm going to call it key of C. I'll press OK. I'm going to disable the scope. The scope is what selects the different racks or uh, what number plugin in each rack you actually want to alter the settings of or save the settings of. So I'm gonna disable it so it's blank and then I'm gonna go ahead and select my vocal channel. I have one, you might have a couple vocal channels that are all gonna have to be in the same key if you have more than one. And then you're gonna wanna select plugin one because uh, the tuning plugin is gonna be at the top of the rack, it's plugin one in this scenario. I'm gonna go back to my overview page here. I'm gonna select my vocal rack. I'll go to my tuning plugin, and now I'm gonna select C, and then I'm gonna to go to a major. So now I have the right key selected in my tuning plugin. Again, if I had multiple vocal mics, I have to do this in multiple racks. And then I'm gonna go back to my show, and then I'm gonna press store that snapshot. So now it's gonna store the key of C on plugin one on my vocal rack. And then I'm gonna press new and I'm gonna call this key of D. I'll press okay. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just recall this snapshot just to make sure the key of D one is recalled. In the scope you can see by default it remained the same, plug in one and then rack one. I'll go back to the rack. I'm gonna change my key to the key of D in the plugin. I'm gonna go back to show snapshots, select key of D and I'm gonna make sure that I press store. So now it's gonna save the key of D to this snapshot. So now if I go back a snapshot and I have key of C enabled, we'll go back to my plugin and you'll see that it's in the key of C down here. And then if I go back to show, I can go and hit over on my snapshots here and then now it's gonna be in the key of D. I'm a big fan of using the user keys function within the software to make it quicker to access those key changes. So I'm gonna to go to setup and then under user key assignments, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select recall snapshot key of C. And then the next one, I'm gonna do recall snapshot key of D. So now when I go back to the, the main page within SuperRack, I can easily switch between these snapshots. So here I'm gonna go ahead and you'll see I can toggle between snapshot one, snapshot two is key of D. And then of course, I wanna make sure I save these snapshots to the session. So I'm gonna go back to sessions and press save. There are so many ways to utilize the power of Waves Super Rack Performer alongside of your digital mixing console in a live performance context. And I really only scratched the surface. But the key is to make sure you understand audio routing with your particular mixing console so you can send audio from channels or mix buses to Super Rack Performer, process that audio, and then send it back to the appropriate place for your live mix. And once that's complete, you'll have the full power of Waves Waves low latency plugins at your disposal, and I can't wait to hear about the progress this brings to your mix. To learn more about Waves Super Rack and all of their plugins, check out waves.com. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.